All right, welcome back to another Wellness Wednesday. I'm Dr. Stephen Ramos, Associate Medical Director with Health Texas Medical Group. Uh, Wellness Wednesday is a time where we're bringing important topics to you, the public, so you can better understand your health and keep yourself healthy. And so, you know, keeping our patients out of the hospital is the number one job for, you know, outpatient doctors like myself. If we can do that, I've done my job pretty well. Um, so along those lines, when I have patients that maybe are not feeling well for a number of reasons, and sometimes they don't know, do I need to go to the ER, do I need to call my primary care doctor, do I need to go into urgent care, there can often be a lot of confusion with that. Can you shed some light on, you know, maybe some tips and advice for these patients to, you know, when do I go to urgent care, when do I go to the ER, you know, what, what's my next step? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say first and foremost, communication with the primary doctor is always the first way to go. You know, if it's not a severe and immediate emergency necessitating an ER visit, always call your primary doctor first. Um, again, they know your history best. They have all your medical records. They've established rapport with you. They have that relationship with you. They know you best. They know your medications and everything that they need to know. An urgent care, on the other hand, I would say would be in situations where maybe your primary doctor is not available after hours for more minor emergencies where you can't be seen and you feel that maybe somebody does need to lay eyes on you, somebody does need to see you. Perhaps you've had an injury, something that, a laceration that may need suturing and there's nobody to see you other than you know someone who's readily available in the urgent care center. Now that doesn't require an ER visit, but maybe an urgent care center along the lines of, of that would be more appropriate, a sprain, a strain, maybe an allergic reaction. Um, the level of care in every location is, is different. Remember, in urgent care, you don't have specialists available to you. Mm -hmm. You don't have a lot of equipment that the ER may have if it is a, a higher level of emergency. Um, if there is a more severe situation you're faced with, then I would say the ER is the way to go. You know, anytime you have a, a head injury, any concern for symptoms related to stroke, so we know what th those may be, yep. you know. Some asymmetry of your face, your face doesn't look the same from the right to the left side. The same thing with the rest of your body, you know, if you're having issues with arm weakness, numbness on one side of the body, or your leg, arm, uh, I mean, your um, leg is numb or weak, you know, that could be a stroke, and time is of the essence in some situations. We're always looking to get our patients uh, the most advantage and benefits they can from their healthcare plan. So, Dr. Clark, why should someone who has a Medicare plan join a Medicare Advantage plan? And this is a really common question because not everyone is right for a Medicare Advantage plan, but many people are. I like to put it into three categories. I think there's three main reasons that a person would, should consider a Medicare Advantage plan. Number one, guesswork. For many patients, the Medicare, the Medicare world is very confusing. Just a minute ago, we talked about, do you pick Part A, Part B? How do I pick a Part D program? What a Medicare Advantage program does for patients is it makes all those choices for you. You basically are able to pick one particular program that provides you all those benefits, provides you your, your doctor care, your hospital care, your, um, your pharmacy care, all of that is rolled into one package. So I think for many people, that is what's important. You kind of have a navigator then to kind of help you through the system. You can go to your physician who hopefully is familiar with the plans and they can kind of walk you through all of that. So that's a real simple reason is guesswork. The second reason is benefits. There are additional benefits in Medicare Advantage plans that traditional Medicare does not provide you. And through the years, Medicare has done a better job of providing preventive care benefits, like coming to your doctor for a physical, colonoscopies, mammograms, et cetera. And that's all great. But there are still many, many services that traditional Medicare does not cover or that you're going to be responsible for your 20% for. So with the Medicare Advantage plan, you have additional benefits, such as a gym membership, or you might have a, a personal uh, response system. Um, there are dental benefits in many of these plans because they want to, the, the law makes them provide as much as Medicare, but they also provide more than Medicare. We look at, uh, uh, you know, vi vitamin supplements they can buy from an over-the-counter uh, magazine that they get. You get a, a, a amount of money each quarter that you can spend. 
So that's the second reason I think that people pick a Medicare Advantage plan is there are additional benefits, way more additional benefits mm -hmm. than you get glasses, hearing aids. I mean, you and I could go on forever with all the additional benefits that a person could get. And, and then I think thirdly, and which it's a little more complicated, but it's an important point to make, is predictability. So when you have a Medicare Advantage plan, your costs are predictable. And we know that seniors live on a fixed income and med you mentioned earlier, Medicare costs, uh, healthcare costs can skyrocket. And so when you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, you know, you have out of pocket deductibles that are set. Medicare, there's no maximum. You could spend all of your life savings in healthcare costs. Whereas with the Medicare Advantage plan, there are limits that are set on your out of pocket expenses. Also, you have predictable copays. If you go to see a specialist, you'll have a predictable copay. Um, no cost to go see your primary care provider. You might have a certain cost for an x-ray or an MRI. So again, very predictable. So it's guesswork, takes the guesswork out of it. Number two is additional benefits, way more benefits than just traditional Medicare. And then thirdly, predictable costs that you can budget for. I think those are the main reasons that people should consider a Medicare Advantage plan. I know I've seen a tremendous amount of issues with just mental health problems yep. and, and depression. Yep. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what maybe holiday depression is, you know, something we see commonly during this time of the year? So, so yeah, so holiday depression is, is the common name of what we know in, in medicine has a seasonal affective disorder. And it's basically a subdivision of depression and when it comes, um, you have a two week period of times in which you're feeling down you are feeling as though you can't perform your regular activities, whether it's sleeping more, sleeping less, eating less, eating more, um, and not being yourself. Um, and it's defined as the period of the beginning of fall and on March, April, depending on the equator. Yeah, it's something that we see kind of every year, like you said, around this time frame. Yeah. Um, days are shorter, nights are longer, that can kind of weigh on you a little bit, not getting as much sunlight. Um, and then really the isolation, right? I mean, that, that tends to happen more commonly during the yep. colder months. Yep. Um, being alone, not being able to interact with family and friends, and especially during the pandemic, it's just been a tremendous problem right. that we've kind right. of faced. Right, it's, it's an add-on to the fire. I mean, the fact that we cannot interact as much as possible, because remember, depression is not per se what you have and the disease that you have is the fact that you're dealing with alone. So what are some things, I guess, during this kind of holiday season that we can do to help prevent some falls? Uh, there are some things that we can look at um, uh, indoors. Uh, is something that we can do is maybe go throughout the house. Um, there's some decluttering that you can do um, in the hallways, the common areas. Um, there's some things that you can apply maybe in the restroom uh, with uh, non-slip uh, mats in the in the bathtub. You know, those are the some of the instances where, where people um, have the higher incidence of slipping or falling. Um, and just kind of take a look at those areas that, um, loose, that are loose around the home, maybe some um, boxes, rugs, things that you can trip over. And the shoes that we wear have a significant you know, um, importance, right? Uh, because if you use the, the slip-on shoes, the, 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 the slippers you know, in the morning, those can get caught and you can fall very easily with those. Mm -hmm.